If you're willing to go to the places inside of you that are dark, that you're ashamed of, when you start to shine light on those things and release yourself from that stuff, that's when you start to have freedom in your life. And then when you have freedom in your life, you're making decisions in your business out of love, out of joy, out of happiness. And what what are the types of results you get when you make decisions out of that? It's night and day. Welcome, Crafted Entrepreneurs. So I'm excited because I've been filming a podcast for hours today and I have so much goodness I still want to give you, but I can't quite get it out by myself. (laughs) So I have my lovely project manager slash coach, Casey Salcedo here with me. And she's going to ask me questions. Yes, we're going to call this most frequently asked questions. Okay. It's going to get juicy. Okay. Everybody's ready. Juicy. Okay. So I am really coming from a place where I hear all of the questions from the women in our mastermind. And there are a lot of different topics, but I would say one that commonly comes up is the fact that women don't know how to stay consistent because Mm -hmm. of their roles of possibly being a mom or just we're so compassionate in the way that God designed us, but sometimes that can get us off track. So what would you say to someone that's having a really hard time being consistent? Oh, okay. This is really good. What would I say to somebody that's struggling with consistency? Well, first of all, when your why is big enough, you'll find a way to be consistent. Yeah. And I think that's where most people struggle is that they just haven't casted a big enough vision for their lives. If you're just starting a business, you know, trying to brand yourself online because you want to make more money, that's not a big enough vision. That's right. not going to pull you out of bed when the alarm clock goes off to do your morning routine. Right. It's just not. You're going to have a million excuses. So I think the thing that needs to happen is you've you've got to start praying for vision mm-hmm. and looking and seeing like, okay, in five years, if I had all the money in the world, all the time in the world, what would I be doing with my time? Right. And a lot of people go, I don't even know. Yeah, they don't. People have no clue because they're in survivor mode right now. Mm -hmm. They're not thriving. Start asking yourself that question. Hmm. Because then that's where your passion will show up. Right. And you'll start seeing like, oh, like I am passionate about giving back. I like for me, I found, oh my gosh, I'm super passionate about prison ministry and Mm -hmm. like, you know, making sure to help those kids of people that are incarcerated. Right. And it's like, that's what I would spend my days doing. Right. And then, okay, but why am I not doing that now? Yeah. And then you start to build a vision where it's like, okay, if I made an extra a million dollars and I could give it to those people, how would their lives change? Yeah. I think you just challenged me recently too. Mm -hmm. I think I was getting ready to hit a sales goal and you're like, well, what are you going to do with that money? And I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) You know, so you have to make space like, you know, just in your mind to dream, cast cast the vision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you have to see it as possible for yourself. And then once you see that, like, oh, my life could get that much better than doing the thing that seems hard. Maybe it's posting on social media. It becomes a lot easier because you're like, but if I do this every single day, if I post on social media, adding value to people's lives every single day, I'm eventually going to have that life. Yeah. And that's what you have to keep telling yourself every single day. Yeah. You know, if I, it's just like when we're working out. Okay. If I go to the gym five days a week for the next three months, what's my body going to look like? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's going to look toned. I'm going to have more energy. I'm going to be sleeping better at night. And so you get tied into that vision and you fall in love with that. And then you're willing to do the hard thing. Yeah. Now, another reason why people struggle with inconsistency is they hang out with people that entertain their yeah, excuses. Yeah, that's so good. They do. Yeah. And some people don't know how to break free of that because it could it be your family. It could be your kids. I mean, there could mm-hmm. be things that, you know, um, your inner circle doesn't align. And I think for me, I found podcasts and you, my mentors and like things that weren't possibly around me every day, but I filled my, you know, my mind and my heart with them. 
if they were out of the scope of physically being able to be with me. Okay, that is such a good point because a lot of people will go, well, you know, Kayla, it's nice for you because you're in Southern California and you're Mm -hmm. surrounded by entrepreneurs who, you know, push you to dream big. But I'm over here in small townville over here. (laughs) Bakersfield. Yeah, but I mean, well, that's even getting to like, there's so many entrepreneurs there now, right? But you you don't have any excuses in today's day and age. You can go to the library, you right. can pick up a, a biography of somebody who has the life that you want, you know, and learn how they think about yeah. things. And you'll see most of them were consistent with the small things, mm-hmm. day in, day out, mm-hmm. the things that nobody sees you do mm-hmm. behind I love closed that. doors. I think I started. I think one of my biggest questions I think I had for you in like a coaching call um, years ago was I believed growing up that I wouldn't follow through. Mm. I was just like, I'm not the type of person to set New Year's goals. I'm not going to follow through. Like that was literally the story. It sounds ridiculous when I say it now, but it was the truth of what my life was at that moment. And so when I came to you, you're like, just start little like just start congratulating yourself and pumping yourself up for everything you do and I told it, you that yes it Damn, literally yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it literally started with me picking at my shoes mm. when I get go to sit at you know at the or I take them off right when I first walk in instead of putting them away and so my husband's like I'm gonna build you a shoe rack at the door if you don't start putting them away and I'm like okay so that was the first thing I did I'd be like good job Casey you put your shoes away you follow through I mean it was just little tiny things that I was like okay you do follow through wait a minute you told this person you were going to do that and you did it you do follow through so it was just very small but those things quantum leaped me to doing things I thought I would never do before like getting on a stage or whatever it was that I did it literally took me from doing nothing to trying to do anything and everything that I could, that God was like, here, do this. It gave you that boldness and courage because you created the confidence necessary. And, you know, keeping those small promises to yourself is what builds up confidence. Yes. You know, so it's, it's for me, like the thing that I'm working on right now, it's like, I've gotten so lax about my social circle and, um, you know, just kind of like letting certain things happen around me mm-hmm. that normally I'd be like, no, like cut that off mm-hmm. really quick. And you're going to have to elaborate. This is <sighs> going to be the juicy version because we don't know. That is so vague. <gasps> Kayla Craft, you're going to have to elaborate in your social circle. So things that aren't aligned with you, is that is that what you're talking about? Yeah, like there are people that... You know, I'm telling you, like, you got to hang out with people who don't entertain your excuses. Yeah. Well, on the flip side of that is you have to hang out with people who are inspiring to you. Mm -hmm. People that don't make you feel comfortable. And I have friends in my life that I'm very comfortable around. Like, I know I could be myself, but their growth game is strong. And so when I am staying the same, I don't feel comfortable around them. You know what I'm saying? And those are the types of people you want. And you're so you don't think you need both. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, because some people, sometimes that's a good question. Sometimes we keep people that we're super comfortable around. Right. And I find myself, I used to do this. I would hang out with them or talk to them when I felt bad about myself. And then I talked to them and I'm like, well, I'm doing better than them. Yeah. So you got to watch that because Feeding the ego. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. you got to watch. And I know I'm not the only one that does that. No, right? we yeah. all have those friends that are like, well, I'm not doing as bad as that girl. <laughs> But you got to watch that because how can I have a healthy friendship Mm -hmm. with that person? Mm -hmm. And how do I make sure that their growth game is strong? Right. You know? Right. Um, It's you got to call them when you're energized and you want to get them energized, Mm -hmm. you know, something like that. But anyways, what I was saying about like the I forgot what I was saying. (laughs) I was saying something. Then you're like, I need to know the juicy details. You said you have gotten very lax. Okay, I've gotten lax around being around some people in a social setting that I don't necessarily like stand for the same values that they stand for. And instead of like being like, no, I'll just kind of be quiet, Mm -hmm. which before I would be very much like, yes, yes, you know, and so I think you have to find the new version of you of that, right? Because you were that snap, snap, snap. And then I feel like God has molded you into a softer version 
Uh, yeah. But that lioness is still in there. Yeah. So just finding the new version it, of that. And it's like, you know, making sure to hang out with people who are consistent with my future. Yeah. That's what I wanted to say is everybody, we got to hang out with people who are consistent with what our future looks like. Absolutely. Yeah, and that will help our consistency. Yeah. If I'm hanging out with people who, you know, like for me, it's like the new age world, like mm-hmm. those people that can be very much in that world that can just like, it can be really contagious really quick. Yeah. And you yeah. got to like shut that kind of stuff down. Yeah. Immediately. Mm-hmm. Cause it's, it's, you know, you're either for God or you're against God. There, there really isn't an in between, you know, there's the lack of knowledge in the gospel and that, you know, there's that in between, but you're either for or against mm-hmm. and new world stuff like that. New age stuff is not, I know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. But I found myself like wanting to like people please and not hurt anybody's feelings around yeah. what I believe sure. and that stuff. Yeah. But I feel like God's like, like, are they like, why are you even hanging out with those people? Like you can't go in and yeah. save them. Like yeah. if, they, if anybody's going to save them, it's going to be me and just let me do it in my timing. Mm-hmm. Amen. Okay. I have another question that just popped in my brain and it's, kind of personal too. So I feel like it'll hit on, you know, just not for me, but hopefully for a lot of people. But so I recently in the last couple of years had a life changing diagnosis Mm -hmm. and I found myself with no vision and I'm very a visionary and I'm creative and, you know, I'm always like, try to be positive and find the God spin on every story and silver lining. You are good at that. Yeah. And that's how God designed me to be. And I, I just want to ask like for our listeners, so maybe someone's going through divorce Mm -hmm. or lost their job and they just have this story they don't want. Like I, I found myself a part of a club I never wanted to be a part of. I'm like, I didn't want this God. I didn't want this to be my story. Yeah. You know, whether it's, you know, an infidelity in your marriage or you, this business that you put so much money into and that now it's not working and now, or people betrayed you. You're a part of a club Yeah, you don't want to be a part of. What would be your advice? That's a, such a good way to put it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what would be your advice, advice to someone to help them get, to give themselves the grace, but help them get back on track? Yeah. Well, I think you've got to spend time with God because there's a reason why he's allowing this season to mm. happen, right? And I don't Ooh, want to say like good. that, oh, God wants bad things to happen to his people. That's that's not true at all. But, you know, there's circumstances that he will let you live through because it's going to refine you. It's like going through the refiner's fire. So he's going to take out all the impurities, you know, so all you have to do is lean on God. Like that is your only answer is I got to lean on God. I don't know what my next move is, but I'm leaning on God. Yeah. And he's I'm, I'm just going to keep taking one step of faith and he's going to show me what the next step of faith is to take. And that is key. God wants us to be blind. You know, like you're in the club that you didn't want to be a part of. That's exactly where God wants you to be, because right. who else do you have to, you know, mm-hmm. look up to? Yeah. So hard moment. to understand that sometimes, too. Just yeah, because it's very human mm-hmm. of us to feel sorry for ourselves. And I've been in that, not in your shoes, but I mean, you know, I remember when I had breast implant illness, I mean, it was so bad when I was in the hospital at 18 and 19 years old, I had ulcerative colitis, you know, like why me, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. and life-changing disease and you can stay there or you can look at it through the lens of your purpose. Mm -hmm. And that is, I think, extremely important for you with your medical diagnosis, right? It's okay. Well, look at it through the lens of my purpose. How is this diagnosis actually going to help me complete my purpose? Right. Right. That's how you get vision. Mm -hmm. Right. I think I went there too right away and almost too soon. So I'm only sharing this in case it helps other people as well, because immediately it was like, I was still in the hospital (laughs) and I'm like, Oh my God. Okay. God's going to use this for me to help, but you know, millions of people. And so, and then it was like, I I had a pretty hard fall after that because I was like, I don't know how God's going to use this. Yeah. You know, it's like you you can go through these ups and downs, but I would say it's so true because once I really started to lean into the promises of God Mm -hmm. and and know that it's not my circumstances and and what I see, it's that's why we have faith. It's with the things that are unseen. Yeah. And so chronic illness can do that to people. 
it can it affect you you know in a way that it's like it's chronic keeps happening but that can be anything that could be the problem that just keeps coming up for people and well, it's like people with their finances yeah have that same like you know you see it the cycle happen yeah. again and again they're living paycheck to paycheck you know and that makes you ill that, yeah, because yeah, I've been there before, too, and mm-hmm. that is no fun. Yeah. That is no fun. And that's why I love I love that you push wealth, generational wealth. It's not like you're pushing people, uh, oh, rich, we want to be rich and fly on jets. It's like, no, it's I generational. <laughs> it's generational wealth that really helps. Like, it's a different thing for me, I feel like, that, that it's like, okay, I can get an, an agreement with that. Yeah. And I mean, generational wealth is is really important to me because, you know, I grew up with nothing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even now, like my mom, I'm taking care of my mom. You Mm -hmm. know, she didn't set herself up. And Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm happy to do so. And I'm grateful and I feel blessed that I'm able to Mm -hmm. help her out. But most people think very short term. What's what's in it for me right now in the next couple of months? And they're not thinking like 10, 20 years from now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we can make the best made plans, but God will, you know, he'll, he's going right. to do something even better. Like I think about my life and I'll go back to just 12 years ago when I was working as a nurse. You know me back then. Mm-hmm. Slinging protein shakes. And all I wanted to do was make an extra two grand a month. That's all I wanted yeah. to do. Yeah. And then I make an extra two grand a month. And then I go, well, what would it look like if I made, you know, five grand? Yeah. And then, and then it was 10 grand and it was like all these things. Oh Very my sh- gosh. When you hit that 10 grand, was I, I was like, proud? oh, she is rich. <laughs> I am following whatever she had signed me up. I'll sell those shakes. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, but she is making 10 grand y'all. <laughs> like she hit the jackpot and I, I've been sold ever since then. I'm so glad that I, that caught me then. Cause <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, no I didn't joke. want to know what I posted. Then. I was like sitting in your living room, like listening to whatever you said. I was like, <laughs> yes, tell me how to get to 10 grand a month. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my yeah. gosh. But all that to be said, it was very short sighted mm-hmm. in the beginning. Like, OK, I'm making money for just to experience, you know, a vacation and yeah. take the kids to Disneyland. And it was like short term goals. And after I had made like a million dollars and I realized like, OK, I've done all of the things. I've gone on the trips that I never even knew was available to me when I was a kid. And I'm not really happy. Mm -hmm. Like I have all of this stuff. I have all this recognition and I don't have joy. Mm. And again, it goes back to the vision. You've got to have a long term vision. Right. Why am I doing all this stuff? Like, why do we get up every single day and work on funnels and the emails and the books and everything that we're working on right Mm -hmm. now if it's not for a big purpose. Right. You know, like I want, I want my kids to like what Chase is creating with his company. It's like, that's a legacy company that the kids are going to be able to take over one day Mm -hmm. and they're going to have something to really like springboard them to do whatever it is that they want to do. They're going to have like that financial backing. They're also going to have a real estate portfolio to like, you know, I want, I want to set them up for that. So they don't have to do all the crap I had to do. Right. They're still going to have to work hard and they're going to have problems, but they're going to have different a different set of problems. Yeah, a different set, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Not not the same. And that that should be we're always evolving and and we should be creating a a, a safe spot for our kids to be better versions of ourselves. Exactly. So. That's good. All right. So, got time for one more? Okay. One more question? All right. This has got to be a good one then. I would say one of the biggest things that I come against when I'm coaching some of our people in our group, uh is that people are not as coachable oh yes as i think they would even hope for and <laughs> i they think and I'm that not, they're delusional and, and i'm not are. sitting on a pedestal because i have been the uncoachable client yeah. in the past and i i think back now and i'm like oh my gosh my poor coach sorry lakin i love you but i just well, that was Did a mommy millionaire. It was. Yeah. I mean, no, I always listen to you. I was scared of you before. So <laughs> I listened to what you told me to do. <laughs> but, you know, just explain, like, what does coachable yeah. mean? And, like, why is it important to remain co- coachable when someone is there being a mirror okay, for you? Okay, people are uncoachable when they think they know it all. Mm. That's, if you think you've got it all figured out, why even waste your money? 
Why even waste your money? Right. Hiring a coach, going to the seminar, investing in the course. Like, well, why? If you think you know all the answers. Because that's also a very lonely place to be. And yeah. It's, it's um, a very defeated place to be when you have all the answers. It's a sucky place. So what we look for is coachable people. So, mm-hmm. hey, I don't know it all. I am willing to face the things that maybe are ugly that I don't want to face mm-hmm. in my life because I know if I face them and I deal with them, I'm going to be able to be a stronger person on the other side of it. And right. I'm actually going to get what I want. But a lot of people will come to us and the reason why they're not coachable, I'm, I'm going to just take a guess here, Yeah, is they just want strategy. Well, just tell me what to do. Right. Tell me what to do to make some money right now. Exactly. And we're like, but wait, you know, who are you being? Mm-hmm. And you know, why do you have such a problem with showing up on social media? It's a self-worth issue. Yeah. All of the, we get to the roots. You're right. We want right. to dig it up and go, okay, we don't want that bitterness root to be there anymore. We don't want that defeated root to be there anymore. We don't want the spirit of mammon to be there anymore. And, you know, like all of these things that really cloud everybody's judgment to where they have sucky businesses. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's where we want to get to. And people do not want to go there because they have bought into the lie right. that strategy is going to fix their business. Yeah. 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 And the more you work on yourself, the more successful you're going to be. Yeah. Period. If you're willing to go to the places inside of you that are dark, that you're ashamed of, when you start to shine light on those things and release yourself from that stuff, that's when you start to have freedom in your life. And then when you have freedom in your life, you're making decisions in your business out of love, out of joy, out of happiness. Right. And what what are the types of results you get when you make decisions out of that? Right. It's it's just it's night and day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. and it could be your version of success because it comes from your place of freedom and joy, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. so it, everybody's version of success is different. It's so different. But if you're somebody right now that is stuck in your ego, ego stands for edging God out. And that's when you think you have to have it right. That's when you think you have to be perfect. You have to get everything right 100 percent of the time. And you have zero grace on yourself. Mm -hmm. And I just want like anybody who's listening in that maybe thinks that I just think that's a stronghold over their life. So that's really they're just have that oppression over them. Mm -hmm. And God can deliver Mm -hmm. you from that in a second. All you have to do is ask. All you have to do is pray that away. True. Yeah. And then I'm literally living proof of it. I I think I came to my coaching call every time, which I'm a coach too. So sometimes they make not the greatest clients. <laughs> I'm like, well, because to... you think you know it all. Yeah, right. So, uh, but mine was time. I'm like, I don't have the time, or you know. So that was my stronghold. Was like it was a victimhood of like I don't have enough time to do all mm-hmm. the things, and mm-hmm. it was a story that really only kept me from doing what God was calling me to do years. It literally kept me years behind. I feel like the timeline I could have been on if I had just allowed that belief to change and it was my own doing, but it really was when I started to pray some of those powerful breakthrough prayers in the place I was literally in the office space I was that it wasn't till then that it really, the ground started shaking things started moving and you know, propelled me to where I am now with you. And it's, it's like my dream job. It's the place that I had envisioned for so long. And God told me it was mine, but I had just fallen to this like belief of, you know, I don't have enough time to actually do the things I need to do to, to be there, you know, to do the things I want to do. So I love that. And it's, it's so true because I was edging God out. Mm -hmm. with that story and it could be somebody else's story of not enough money or they're not good enough or the worthiness which we see a lot yeah we see all of that stuff but now I see it so much more as spiritual Mm. you know and if you're working with a good coach they're going to be praying for you yeah you know they're going to be praying for you and like breaking through in the spiritual realm because you and you need people like that that are going to contend for you yeah Right. They're going to be like, no, I'm not going to like let this. Yeah. Let this happen. Yeah. They're going to fight for you. And you know, it's so true. And that's that's a real I'm so glad you said that because I 
I do feel like not enough people have those people in their life. Mm-hmm. They don't. At, at all. Because your friends well, aren't Well, because everybody's be so focused on, this is where it goes back to the consistency thing and hanging out with the right people. You know, like mm-hmm. you've got to hang it's out with people circle, that yeah. are your prayer warriors. Mm-hmm. Like who do, who can you text right now to be like, get on your knees and pray? Yeah. Who's actually going to do it? Yeah. But I think that that's like so important. If you don't have that, be that. Contend for others right now and help them like break through their spiritual strongholds. Mm -hmm. Because was it in Mark 2 that Jesus healed a paralyzed man because of his friend's faith? Yes. I love that. I remember praying for that. I remember praying to God, like, I need those those friends in my life. And he sure, he brought them Mm -hmm. like that. He will. Yeah, he really did. And it's something even going back to like, I'm teaching Bella that right now. Like, she doesn't have the best set of friends and she, we're, we're praying for them every night. We're praying for those good friends to come in her life. And I'm always teaching her to, to get good friends, be a good friend, you yeah. know, like show that, show that you are a good friend to receive that. So we need so that good. little reminder. Yep. Well, thank you so much for um, making my life easy tonight. And I hope everybody yes. got some good little nuggets out of it. Yeah. But if we could just take away one thing, I think it goes to, you know, if you're struggling in your life, Go to God. Yeah. And, you know, pray about everything that you're going through. Right. In your business, in your, with your strategy in your business. Mm -hmm. And getting really clear about what you really want. And getting the vision. Yeah. Like, yeah. And sometimes like I will even pray that God will speak to me in my dreams. Yeah. If I don't have a clear vision about something that's going to be happening, Mm -hmm. it's like, okay, God, give me like give me the vision. Yeah. And he will in like weird ways. In yes. My dreams. Same. I love that. I love when God comes to me to envisions in my dream. Uh, it like fires me up. Mm-hmm. I love well, it. Yeah. Love it. Love it. He loves to show us the way he doesn't yeah. want to make it hard. Yeah. You yeah. Know? There's a verse that says it's not hidden His, you know, the truth is not hidden. Mm. Our vision for us is not hidden. It's there. It's just whether we are prepared, our hearts and minds ready to see it, act it out. That's good. All right. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank Thank you, Casey.